Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Why half in and half out just isn't an option for royals. The Conversation reports Robert Hazel, professor of British politics and government, director of Constitution Unit, UCL London, and Bob Morris, honorary senior research associate, Constitution Unit, UCL. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's decision to step back from royal duties has been described as a crisis for the British monarchy, but they are the ones who are most likely to suffer the damage. Members of the royal family are in a conflicting position. They lead lives of great privilege, but they also lack fundamental freedoms. They aren't free to choose a career, they cannot speak freely, and they have limited freedom to privacy and family life which the rest of us take for granted. Harry and Meghan are not alone in finding that frustrating. Prince Laurent of Belgium is another who is visibly unhappy in the role. The harsh reality is that younger sons are spares who are ultimately dispensable from a hereditary monarchy. It is only those in direct line of succession who count. As spares, they are subject to the same personal restrictions as the immediate heirs, without either the prospect of succession or the freedom to develop truly independent careers of their own. Other European monarchies, encouraged by parsimonious governments and legislature, have learned to keep the core team as small as possible. It can be just for four people. In Norway and Spain, it is the king and queen, the heir and their spare and their spouse. In 2019, the king of Sweden, removed five grandchildren from the royal family under parliamentary pressure to reduce its size and its cost. The UK has a larger population, over 10 times the size of Norway, and it could therefore be count contended that it makes sense for its royal family to be larger to carry out necessary duties. A bigger team is also required given the realms. The Queen is head of state of 15 countries other than the UK, and Prince Charles and his sons make regular visits to countries such as Australia, Canada and New Zealand. In total, 15 members of the British royal family conducted almost 4,000 royal engagements in the year 2019 alone. Cutting the spares, Prince Charles is said to want a smaller, streamlined monarchy, perhaps just the core team of the Queen, Charles and Camilla, William and Kate but with a smaller team they could accept fewer royal patronages and fulfill far fewer engagements. It is not clear how far Prince Charles has thought through such consequences any more than Harry and Meghan have thought through the consequences for others of what they want. Now the media has portrayed this as a crisis for the monarchy and it is indeed a family crisis, but the monarchy is an institution as an institution will suffer no serious or lasting damage. Opinion polls consistently show between 70 and 80 percent support for preserving the monarchy, popularity ratings politicians would die for. The damage is more likely to be suffered by Harry and Meghan, who may have misjudged the extent to which their celebrity is independent of their royal status. Their plans to carve out a progressive new role, quote-unquote, and to work to become financially independent have been widely criticized as unrealistic. Initial polling shows some public sympathy for their aims, but strong objection to their continuing to receive public money. Royal officials have been tasked to find a compromise, but it's hard to see how they can be half in and half out of the royal family and reside regularly abroad. Can you ever really leave? There are two levels of difficulty. The first is shared, sharing the load. All members of the royal family who carry out public duties do so on behalf of the Queen and must be willing to undertake their fair share of the duties assigned to them. The second is the risk that becoming financially independent will involve exploiting their royal titles and royal connections for commercial gain. Other members of the family who accept the constraints will understandably feel aggrieved if Harry and Meghan are allowed to pick and choose. The Sussexes, nevertheless, deserve our sympathy. In a comparative study of the European monarchies due to be published in our upcoming book, The Role of Monarchy in Modern Democracy, 
We argue that it should be possible for minor royals to opt out of the gilded cage if they find the restrictions too great. But opting out would need to be total, giving up not just their public duties, but their public funding, their royal titles, their security, trying as far as possible to become private people. It would not be easy to undergo such a comp complete change of lifestyle, and it may not prove possible. The public might still consider them to be a royal couple, and the media might continue to portray them as such, keeping them in the spotlight whether they want to be or not. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.